Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we are rounding out our coverage of H series processors for this generation with a look at Intel's Core i5-11400H. This mobile CPU is the direct competitor to AMD's Ryzen 5 5600H and is being used across many mainstream affordable laptops as the entry level option in the lineup. If you don't want to grab a Core i7-11800H, which we've already reviewed on the channel, then what is the Core i5-11400H bringing? Well, like its faster brothers, the 11400H is a Tiger Lake H45 processor, so it comes with all the architectural upgrades we've talked about previously. 10 nanometer super thin process technology, Tiger Lake architecture with improvements to cache sizes, clock speeds and efficiency, plus new features like support for PCIe 4.0. It also comes with an integrated XC GPU, though the GPU has been cut down significantly compared to top-end Tiger Lake models. Unlike the Core i7 and Core i9 models though, which pack the full 8 cores available on this Tiger Lake H45 die, the Core i5-11400H uses a cut-down version with 6 cores and 12 threads, along with 12 megabytes of L3 cache. The base clock at 45 watts is higher, as it doesn't need to be split across as many cores, sitting at 2.7 GHz, However, boost clocks are also reduced relative to higher end models. The 11400H tops out at 4.5 GHz single core and 4.1 GHz all core. What Intel has left out of this chart are exact GPU specifications. You'll see here that it's listed as having UHD graphics with the same clock speeds as other processors. But what Intel aren't telling you is that the Core i5 model has just 16 execution units in its XE GPU compared to 32 on higher tier models. This means the 11400H really requires a discrete GPU to get adequate graphics performance as 16 execution units provides the performance of roughly a last generation 10th gen CPU. CPU. The test system for today's benchmarking is the XMG Core 17, the same sort of laptop we've been using for our latest looks into NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3050 and RTX 3050 Ti. However, I should mention here that this Core 17 version is a sample version only, as XMG has, at least for now, only decided to launch high spec models with GPUs such as the RTX 3060. If you're interested in it though, we do have links in the description below, and I think it's a pretty neat laptop that's well built for value conscious buyers. Internally, there is an Intel Core i5-11400H processor and 16GB of dual-channel DDR4-3200 memory, good quality stuff that doesn't hinder performance. There's also a 1080p 144Hz IPS display here, and for my configuration, 1TB of SSD storage. As for the discrete GPU, it's a GeForce RTX 3050 that runs at between 80 and 95 watts with dynamic boost enabled, the highest configuration that NVIDIA allows for this part. As with all our previous laptop testing, benchmarks have been conducted at the processor's default TDP, which for H-series parts is 45 watts, allowing for apples to apples comparisons across all the CPUs we've tested. Boost behavior is left unchanged. We'll also be looking at power scaling later in the video, so you can see how higher power configurations compare available with some laptops. Results in the charts are an average of benchmarks taken with the same configuration. The full list of laptops used for testing is available in the description. Onto the charts. Starting out with Cinebench R20 multi-threading and it's not too bad of a result for the Core i5-11400H. We're already seeing performance only just shy of the last generation Core i9-10980HK and above that of AMD's Ryzen 5 4600H. However, the result still falls a little short of the newer Ryzen 5 5600H. All up, the 11400H ends up 8% slower than the 5600H and quite a substantial 19% slower than the 11800H, indicating that Intel's 8-core design is a decent amount more efficient despite the same 45-watt power limit. With the Core i5-11400H being limited to just 4.5GHz on a single core, it's no surprise to see it perform below that of other Tiger Lake processors, as this turbo clock is the lowest of any model I've tested so far. In fact, it's a double whammy here, as not only is the clock speed lower, but the 11400H also only has half the L3 cache of the 11800H, so in total performance is down 4% in this benchmark. However, this is still enough for the 11400H to beat the Ryzen 5 5600H to the tune of 5%. In handbrake video encoding, the 11400H's performance is quite similar to what was shown in Cinebench multi-threading. The 11400H is slightly faster than the Ryzen 5 4600H and slightly slower than the Core i9-10980HK. Compared to current generation processors, that puts it 5% behind the Ryzen 5 5600H at 45 watts and 13% behind Intel's Core i7-11800H. 
In Blender, the 11400H doesn't perform quite as well as in Handbrake, now just matching the 4600H in this test. This puts performance 8% behind the Ryzen 5 5600H and 17% behind the Core i7-11800H, so these sorts of heavy multi-threading workloads aren't the best on this Tiger Lake 6-core processor. However, in a workload like Chromium Code Compilation, it's a bit different. The 11400H performs quite well here, slightly outperforming the Ryzen 5 5600H and on par with last generation 8-core processors. While this is a strong result comparing Core i5 to Ryzen 5, performance is still 19% slower than the Core i7-11800H, so there's plenty of reason to get the Core i7 model if you need more processing power. MATLAB is another good result for the Core i5-11400H. Here, this Tiger Lake processor is only marginally behind other models in the lineup, allowing it to outperform every Ryzen 5000 processor in this short test. This comes down to a combination of factors, and Intel CPUs tend to be quite strong in these sorts of burst workloads that hit the high turbo frequencies on offer. On the flip side, in Microsoft Excel, the Core i5-11400H suffers heavily due to the reduction in L3 cache from 24 meg with higher tier models to just 12 meg with this model. Performance is down over 30% compared to the 11800H as a result, and while this is still competitive with the Ryzen 5 5600H, just 3% slower, in the 8-core bracket this benchmark was a much more resounding win to Intel. 7-zip compression also appears to suffer from the reduction in cache with the 11400H, along with lower boost frequencies compared to other Intel processors. The result is still better performance than the 5600H, although the margin is a narrow 4%. However, it doesn't really get near the 8-core parts like the 11800H or 5800H. Then in decompression, the 11400H can't keep up with any of AMD's Ryzen processors. This is a very strong benchmark for AMD, so performance is even a little bit lower than the 4600H and 17% behind the 5600H. We're also seeing a 27% reduction on the 11800H, which benefits from more cache, more cores, and higher frequencies. In Acrobat PDF exporting, the Cry 5 11400H performs very similarly to both the Ryzen 5 5600H and Ryzen 7 5800H. We're talking about just a few percent either way. However, performance is 6% slower than the 11800H in this heavily single-threaded benchmark. Then we get to Adobe Photoshop with the Puget Systems workload. The Core i5 11400H isn't a bad performer here, but results are quite similar to the battle between the 5800H and 11800H in that the Ryzen processor, the 5600H, is marginally faster. With that said, the difference isn't very significant, so you can expect basically the same performance whether you get a 5600H or an 11400H, with only higher end parts providing a more substantial difference. Lastly, a quick look at Adobe Premiere exporting, where the Ryzen 5 5600H and Core i5-11400H perform pretty similarly. Nothing too surprising and clear, this makes it far superior than Intel's supposedly Core i7 model in the 11370H, which is just a quad-core and doesn't perform well at all, despite having an RTX 3070 GPU. Next up, I'm going to show just a few gaming benchmarks. The results here don't tell us a huge amount, as the GPU we're using is the RTX 3050, which doesn't exactly provide us with much of a CPU bottleneck in games. However, lower-end GPUs are more likely to be paired with a mainstream CPU, such as the Core i5-11400H, and we can compare this apples to apples with the Core i7-11800H with the same GPU to see if there are any differences. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the two RTX 3050 laptop GPU configurations deliver a similar performance. Although the Core i5-11400H system is slightly slower in both average and 1% lows. The 1% low figure is 6% lower on the Core i5 system, but average frame rates are just 2% behind and nothing here is much cause for alarm. Next up we have Resident Evil 2 running at 1080p using balanced settings, and again, there just isn't much between the 11800H and 11400H in this test. At most we're seeing a 4% difference when comparing 1% lows with the 11400H as the slower system. Again, very similar in Borderlands 3, the 11400H configuration is 3% slower in average frame rates and 6% slower in 1% lows, which is about expected in this sort of game with the differences between the two CPUs. So. Nothing overly concerning. In Rainbow Six Siege, I was able to report the same performance with the RTX 3050 and Core i5-11400H as I was with the Core i7-11800H. There were several other titles like this where performance is practically unchanged, including in Cyberpunk 2077, as one example where the game simply overwhelms the RTX 3050 GPU running at these sorts of quality settings, and I expect this to be mostly the case with these sorts of laptop GPUs. 
I could go on with these sorts of examples where performance is within a few percent, but instead I'll skip straight to one of the largest margins, which was in Hitman 3 using the CPU heavy Dartmoor benchmark. In this test, I saw the largest difference in average frame rates. The 11400H was 6% slower than the 11800H and a large 15% slower in 1% lows. When you have a game that can make use of the additional CPU cores on offer in the 11800H, along with its improved efficiency and higher clock speeds, some games can benefit even with an RTX 3050, though this is an outlier. All up, there's really not much to say about the gaming performance of the 11400H, at least with these configurations. On average, the 11400H was under 2% slower, which is negligible, and even with 1% lows, we're only seeing a 4% difference on average, which is hardly a cause for concern. You will see larger margins with higher end configurations, especially on the GPU, but like I said, I don't expect too many systems to be pairing a Core i5 11400H with something like an RTX 3080 laptop GPU, which tends to be where you start to see those CPU limitations come into play. Then when looking at productivity performance, it's no surprise to see a larger margin between the Core i5-11400H and Core i7-11800H. Heavily multi-threaded tests are upwards of 15% slower on the 6-core model, and it simply doesn't have the core count or efficiency to compete. Lightly threaded tests are also slower, and where the 11400H really gets punished is in anything that utilizes cache, which is halved on this model compared to the Core i7 line. This is really only relevant for those looking at whether the 11800H or 11400H is a better value buy though. The real battle is between the 11400H and AMD's Ryzen 5 5600H, which is looking like a very tight comparison at 45 watts. In longer term, heavily multi-threaded workloads, the AMD CPU does have the advantage. However, in the majority of these cases, the 11400H is less than 10% slower. Meanwhile, in more lightly threaded applications, the two parts end up very similar. Cinebench performance, for example, the 11400H is less than 5% faster, and the two models trade blows in applications like Photoshop. Then there are some benchmarks that more strongly favor Intel, like MATLAB. When compared to a previous generation part, like the Ryzen 5 4600H, the Core i5-11400H is clearly the better processor. Single thread performance is miles ahead with the Tiger Lake design, and multi-thread performance is generally either even or slightly ahead with the 11400H as well. On a pure performance perspective, you'd want the 11400H over the 4600H in your budget laptop. Impressively, the Core i5-11400H isn't too far off the Core i9-10980HK, which I think highlights the large jump in performance that Intel has made this generation. The 11400H doesn't always beat the prior generation 8-core flagship model, but it does get close in some workloads, particularly those that can benefit from Tiger Lake's superior IPC and larger cache. The final section of our benchmarks is on power scaling, and this is where things get super interesting for the battle between the Core i5-11400H and Ryzen 5 5600H. At 45 watts, as we've shown in many of our multi-thread benchmarks, the Ryzen 5 5600H is generally the faster processor, and that's true in this chart as well. But the gap closes and is totally nullified at 65 watts and above, with both the 5600H and 11400H delivering effectively equivalent performance in this power range. This is due to Tiger Lake's superior power scaling at higher power levels, as we've shown with previous models. The only limiting factor here are all-core turbo frequencies, which like the 5600H level off at the maximum the CPU can do at around 70 watts. If the 11400H's all-core turbo clock of 4.1 GHz was raised, I expect the 11400H would easily beat the 5600H at higher power levels, like say 80 watts or more, but as it stands, the best the 11400H can offer is equivalent performance. Conversely, the 5600H is far superior at lower power ranges, such as when the TDP is configured down to 35 watts. What this means for laptop buyers is that in slimmer and lighter systems, think a 15-inch ultra-portable with Max-Q type discrete graphics, the Ryzen 5 5600H is going to be either equal to or faster than the Core i5-11400H, as we've shown throughout this review. However, in beefier laptops, particularly higher spec gaming systems that have the cooling capacity to handle higher wattages, the Core i5-11400H is going to, at worst, match the Ryzen 5 5600H, like in this scaling chart, or in most cases, outperform it. Of course, what is shown here doesn't really apply to lightly threaded workloads, it doesn't apply as much to burst workloads, and you'll also generally be limited to 45 watts or so in applications that use both the CPU and GPU, which is why it is the default TDP. But the advantage to the 11400H in CPU-only workloads in systems with lots of cooling and higher power limits is pretty clear. Overall, 
I'm quite impressed with the Intel Core i5-11400H, and honestly, I think this is the best mobile CPU that Intel have produced in quite some time. Perhaps the best CPU period, given their lackluster 11th generation launch on the desktop. It's the most competitive part we have with AMD's Ryzen 5000 APUs of the same class, and I think there's a strong case to be made that the 11400H is the better product. In a head-to-head -head battle with the Ryzen 5 5600H, the Cry 5 11400H trades blows depending on the application and what aspects to the CPU it's stressing. The 5600H does have the advantage at 45 watts in heavy multi-threading, but in most other tasks the 11400H is either close to the 5600H or outperforms it. This advantage to Intel only grows at higher power limits, where the 11400H is able to close the gap in multi-threading to the point where the differences are negligible. This Core i5 vs Ryzen 5 battle is much closer in performance than the Core i7 vs Ryzen 7 battles we've looked at previously, which are more in favour of AMD. The 11400H isn't an overwhelming winner, but things like the cache size and clock speeds are set to just the right amount to be very competitive with AMD without cannibalising the Core i7 11800H, which is still quite a bit faster. It also provides a great platform for gaming, at least with the mainstream RTX 3050 we tested today, as the performance difference compared to higher tier CPUs is negligible, so there's no point wasting any money on those. On top of competitive performance with AMD, I feel the Core i5 11400H has the better platform and set of features. Intel offers 20 lanes of PCIe 4.0, while AMD is still stuck on PCIe 3.0, a minor consideration, though it might have some implications for storage performance, but there are bigger features such as Thunderbolt 4, support that do remain a key selling point for some buyers. Intel also has better availability this generation, which is important in a supply constrained market, so it might be easier for you to find an 11400H laptop. While I would generally prefer the Core i5-11400H over the Ryzen 5 5600H, there are some drawbacks. The 11400H's iGPU is very weak, as bad as 10th Gen H series parts and less than half as fast as the 5600H's iGPU, so a discrete GPU is a must. The other is in pricing, where generally Intel systems are more expensive than AMD. Now, it's pretty hard to compare pricing in this current market as there are wild differences between models and vendors, but you're facing 5-10% to higher prices to go Intel in otherwise equivalent builds. Especially around that 5% higher mark, I feel the price difference is fair, and with the 5600H frequently out of stock, I'd be happy to pay that sort of margin to get a laptop that's actually in stock. But if you're talking about needing to spend 10 or 15% more on Intel, I don't feel the value proposition is there, though in this class it's certainly a very close battle, and competition is always what we like to see. Anyway, that's it for this review of the Intel Core i5 11400H and for our H-series testing for now. If you're interested in checking out any of the other CPUs that we've been talking about in this video, the 5600H, 5800H, 11800H, and all the other processors, we do have individual videos on those on the channel, so you can get a pretty good idea of how these parts will perform in the laptop that you're thinking of buying. But of course, lots of considerations, as OEMs always tend to do their own thing with these sorts of things. If you're interested in supporting our testing, please sign up to our Patreon or Floatplan accounts. Links are in the description below. You'll gain access to things like our Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, and all of that good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.